Hey, shalom, shalom, Israel, most high, Christ bless. I'm just trying to give give some people time to get on. Y'all give me a minute. Give me a minute. All right, y'all. Uh, I guess I'm going to go and get started. I was uh, sending some links to the captains. Um, we were discussing some things. Most high Christ bless everybody. Uh, I pray and hope y'all been having a successful day, a prosperous day, a glorious day. I pray and hope you brothers and sisters been in the spirit as well. Uh, look, let's stand up. Let's face the east. Let's send up the prayers. Uh, sisters, make sure your head covered. Uh, brothers, make sure you hit our cover. Let's do it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, y'all. Uh, y'all going to have different teachers on here every day. I know it's supposed to be 5 p.m. Eastern time. And um, what we going over is... Um, Oh, yeah, we're going to be reading the four chapters today. Because Bishop says, some of y'all, you still ain't reading the four chapters today. So, um, hey, some of y'all might not be good readers. Hey, we don't know, but we're going to read the four chapters for you. A lot of y'all, look, I mean, hey, all the excuses going to be, you know, basically just taken out of the wonder, you know. <laughs> be thrown out of the wonder. It's going to get to the point where our people ain't going to have no excuse, not one excuse at all. You know what I'm saying? Well, why they lack understanding, especially in the age of information. When they got when we got cell phones, when we got the internet, you know, so you know, it ain't gonna be no excuses. That's serious. So look, uh, I'm open up with Genesis one. Remember, y'all, this just reading. That's it. Uh, I'm not gonna break everything down. I got plenty of classes online breaking down Genesis one through four. Uh, Genesis 6, 7, 8. I got plenty of classes. Y'all just got to look for them. But I'm not going to sit up here and go through every precept uh, for every verse. It, it, it ain't happening right now. Because then it's, you know, I think we only supposed to do this for two hours. So I'm already 12 minutes in. It ain't happening. I'm just telling y'all the truth. You know what I'm saying? Um, so with that being said, uh, where we at? Where we at? Uh, Genesis 1. Verse 1. All right, here we go. Uh, let me see. Genesis 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, as I go through it, y'all, I will do some explaining. Now, this darkness right here, y'all, I know some people saying that this darkness represents sin, but this talking about uh, pure darkness. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about real darkness. Everything was all black in the beginning. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, when you wake up in the morning before the sun come up, y'all, you know, you're going to see a little bright light. You're going to see a light. That light ain't coming from the sun. That light ain't coming from the moon. That light ain't coming from the stars. It's just light that God created. And he told you why he created it when you go to uh, Second Edges, chapter 6, verse 38 through 40. Now, usually when I break down Genesis 1, I got plenty, plenty of Genesis 1 breakdowns uh, on here. I mean, you know, online, just check all the, you know, go back to the IUIC in the classroom pages and look for some with me on them. I think the Captain Yasha broke it down. I always coincide Genesis 1 with 2nd Edge 6. You know what I'm saying? And it's 2nd Edge 6, 38 through 53. So if you want a, a good explanation of Genesis 1, you want to coincide it with or parallel parallelly with uh, second edge of six, 38, 40. I mean, second, uh, second edge of six, 38 through 53. So what we at verse three and God said, let there be light. And there was light and God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness and God called the light day and the darkness. He called night and the evening and the morning was the first day. So the day begins in the evening. You know what I'm saying? Or when it's dark. A day begins when it's dark. It begins when it's dark and it ends when it's dark. All right, what we at? Verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters. And were under the firmament from the waters, which were above the waters. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. So y'all know space, space is water up there. That's why he's saying God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. The firmament is talking about the sky. That's what it's talking about, the sky. 
verse 9. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters God, I mean of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, and the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So that's when the Lord created the uh, the stars, the moons, the sun, and everything else to help light, even make a brighter light upon the earth. Let's keep going. Verse 15, I mean 16. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God said, I mean, God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day. That's how you know the sun was going to be brighter than the light the Lord created on the, let me see, let me make sure, the first day. Because he said this light was going to be so bright. That it was going to rule over the day. All right, where we at? Let me read that again. Verse 18. And to rule over the day and over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning was the fourth day. And the, verse 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life. And fowl they may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moved, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Verse 24. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping things, and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth now notice how i said let them proof in the pudding when the lord created the earth he just didn't create one man you know say so he just didn't create one man this this is verse 27 so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. And when it's saying man right there, y'all, it's talking about mankind. It's talking about mankind. That's why it says, so God created man in his own image. And now it's been approved that it's talking about mankind. In the image of God created he him. Right there, that he him is talking about a particular person which he begins to describe in Genesis 2. It say, male and female created he them. Now you know what? Male, female, that's mankind. And listen to this, verse 28. And God blessed them. Bless who? Mankind. Just like he blessed the whales and the fowls and the cattle. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the earth and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb burned seed which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree 
and the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the earth, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat. So herbs was created for me. I know some of y'all like to smoke the herb, but the Lord said, look, I created the herb for meat. And it was so, verse 31, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. Yes, y'all, snakes is good, according to God. Jellyfish is good, according to God. He created everything for his own purpose. Hold on, hold on. Let me give me some water, y'all. Hey, Rob. Yes, sir. You bring me some water. Or get ready to bring it to me. All right. I will be at Genesis 2, verse 1. Uh, okay, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. So this is the first Sabbath. This is the first Sabbath that you're reading about right here in Genesis chapter 2. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that it had... Uh -uh. Oh, thank you, thank you, Ryan. What we at? Verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was not a man to till the ground, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the earth. So now we're dealing with the manner of creation. You know what I'm saying? Showing you basically what verse two, uh, chapter two goes into. It basically goes into uh, what's the word I want to I want to use? Man, I'm trying to think of the use. It, it's it's basically giving you now more detail. It's going through. It's been to add detail into things that you read about in chapter one. So chapter two adds detail to certain things that you read about in chapter one. Let's read on verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. You see that? That's detail right there. You know what I'm saying? Let you know. Hey, look, okay. How did he do it? Uh, what did he do the sixth day? So now it's telling you what he did and what he used to form man. So it's just giving you detail on how he created man. But so look, let's keep going. It's saying, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. The breath of life is talking about the commandments. And we're dealing with Adam right here. We're dealing with the chosen Adam. The, the, the first, the, the Adam, the, the one man that the Lord chose from. The Lord always had a favorite from the beginning. He always had a favorite from the beginning. Out of all the people he created on the planet Earth, he had him a favorite from the beginning. Let's keep going. Verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight. And good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden. Now this river is talking about the Jordan River. To water the garden. And from thence it was parted. It became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison. That's the Nile River. There is it which compasses the whole land of Havala, where there is gold. It say, and the gold of the land is good. There is Bedellium and the Onyx Stone. And the name of the second river is Jehan. This is talking about the Blue Nile. The same is it that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third is Hadekel. That is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Hold on. Hey, Nakoda, get in there. Go sit down, Nakoda. All 
All right, where we at? Verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden to eat him, to dress it, and to keep him. Okay, now I'm trying. All right, then this one I was at verse 15. Verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, now Every tree of the garden thou mayest eat, I mean, mayest freely eat. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So right here, y'all, you got literal, literally trees, and then you got some of these trees represent man, according to Mark 8, verse 24. So some of these trees are literal trees, and some of these trees represent man, according to Mark 8 and 24. Let's read on. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a help me for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the earth and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the earth and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. So now, okay, the Lord looked at all the women on earth. And the Lord said it wasn't a uh, help that was right for Adam. So let's see what ended up taking place. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Hold on. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm right. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took oh, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man so now the lord created eve from adam but why because he wanted a woman right for him at that time hold on y'all give me one minute give me one minute i apologize give me a minute Okay, all right, y'all, my fault. All right, where we at? Verse 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife. And we're not ashamed. Okay, chapter 3, verse 1. So now what, what we're going to deal with, now we're going to deal with the craftiness of your enemy. That's what chapter 3 deals with. Chapter 3 deals with the craftiness of your enemies. All right, where we at? Uh, chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yeah, now this serpent, y'all, this ain't talking about no literally snake. Another word for serpent is deceiver. You know what I'm saying? Another word for serpent is deceiver. And this is talking about Satan. And, and I'm going to prove to you it's talking about Satan. According to 2 Corinthians 11 and 13, it says Satan himself, uh, Satan transform, uh, transforms himself into an angel of light. Okay, what we at? I'm going to read verse 1 again. Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. This is that you know that this ain't talking about no literally serpent. Because this thing is talking. How many of y'all have met a serpent that can talk? Because I know I ain't never met or seen a serpent that speaks. Except for pretending on TV. Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the tree 
of the trees of the garden, but the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God have said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not, you shall, you shall not surely die. But God do it know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So now what's going on? Satan just taught uh evil doctrine. He, Satan just taught evil doctrine there. And see, the teaching was you weren't going to die. Remember, she was taught before if she break the commandments of God, she was going to die. Now the serpent said, no, if you break the commandments of God, you ain't going to die. And then he told, I I'm going to tell y'all how this compares to Christianity today, just to think about it. Okay, what Christianity tell you? Oh, okay, uh, you got to come into Christ. Your eyes are going to be open. Uh, you, 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 you ain't burned by the old covenant. You don't have to keep the commandments and you ain't going to die. But <laughs> what, what the Israelites, what we tell you, oh, no, uh, no, this is the truth. You are, look, you already got the truth. Don't get up out of Christianity. Now you got the truth. You know what I'm saying? Look, uh, if, if you leave the commandments, you're going to die. So you see how there's two different teachings. Cause a lot of y'all ain't understanding that when you deal with Genesis, you're dealing with an illustrated story, period. All right, let me keep reading, y'all. It said, "For God do it know that in the day you eat thereof, then you shall, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil." And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it ain't talking about little food; it's talking about good to learn. You know what I'm saying? Let's read on. And that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. So what was the fruit she ate? She ate the lies. She ate the lies. And, and she was enticed to break God's commandments. And what she do? She went back and she told her husband the same thing the serpent told her. That's why he said she took the fruit thereof and did eat. Now, look, I'm, I do want to give y'all a precept real quick. I just got to give a precept for this one. A precept for fruit, Hosea 10 and 13, because I know some new people online. And I know y'all want me to do the whole Genesis breakdown. But there's plenty of them online, y'all. We're just reading now. When I feel like I need to throw a precept out there for you, I'm going to do it. And if we got a little time to, because uh, it's supposed to be two hours of reading. So if I got a little time to answer questions, I'll answer some. Okay, go. Uh, let's read Hosea 10 and 13. It said, You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies. That's what it's talking about. Lies. She was lied to. You know what I'm saying? She was taught something. Uh, Satan lied to her. He taught her a doctrine. And she disobeyed God. Let's go right back to where we was at. Genesis 6. Verse 7, and she went and taught that to her husband, and her husband believed it. And he broke the commandments of God as well. Verse 7, uh, Genesis 3 and 7, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. Now, they weren't literally naked. They wasn't literally naked. They was in sin. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's keep going. And they sold fig leaves together. And made themselves aprons. And what they did after that, they tried to cover their sins. They, it's precepts for all this, y'all. I ain't going through every precept. I say, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. So what they did, they tried to hide their sins amongst the other people that was in the garden of Edom with them. You know what I'm saying? So when they're saying trees of the garden, they tried to hide there. It's a precept for that in Ezekiel 31, verse 8. You can read it yourself. Showing you how Adam tried to hide his sins amongst the other people that was around during that time. Let's keep going. Uh, verse 9. 
And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, War out thy. Now what he was doing, because people were like, well, if he almighty power, why is he looking for Adam? No, he was calling Adam to examine himself. Why? Because Adam started to separate himself from God. How he started to separate himself from God? He covered his sin. Him and his wife was trying to cover their sins. They were trying to hide their sins. God already knew what he was doing. So he was calling him to examine himself. That's why I say, uh, what we at? And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, What art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? As thou eat of the tree, whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat. You see that? This is how you know he broke God's commandments, period. You know what I'm saying? Have you did what I told you not to do? That's basically what he asking them. Because he, he was going around other nations. Uh, Eve ran into Satan. And Satan taught her a doctrine. Okay, let's, let's keep going. All right, one minute. Hold on, I, I, no, I ain't end up in chapter five. All right, uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Verse 12. All right, and the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. So now you got Adam blaming the Eve for his sin. Not only did he blame Eve, he blamed God also. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So now they're playing the blame game. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, Thou art cursed above all cattle. Now, this is talking about all nations. I think the precept for that is in Micah 7 and 16. I think so. I think so. I got to look. Uh, let me see. Let me check real quick. I think I, think I got one in Isaiah too. Let me look. Make sure. Okay, all right, a better one would be Isaiah 49 and 23. That's a good precept. Talking about the nations. All right, it say, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. A good uh, precept for the beast of the field is Ecclesiastes 3 and 18. Because he said, Man, I number beast to me, or something like that. Got how I go. Upon thy belly shall thy go, and dust shall thy eat all the days of thy life. So, all he was saying that he was going to be at a very low estate. He was going to be like a vagabond upon the earth. Who else became like a vagabond upon the earth? Cain. Who else became like a vagabond upon the earth? Esau. So I'm not saying Cain, Esau. That's the damn devil. All right, where we at? Uh, verse 15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Now, this is a prophecy right here. This ain't talking about him and Eve. This is actually talking about him and the nation of Israel. The woman that is talking about is Jeremiah 3, verse 2. It's talking about Israel, and I'm gonna show you how I know how you know it's talking about Israel. And between thy seed and her seed, do the woman bring forth seed? Hell no. Well, I mean, okay, the woman give birth, but what the man do? Who plants the seed? Who plants the seed? The man plants the seed. So now he's saying, Look, the Lord said, Look, I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna put enmity between. The serpent seed or Satan seeds and Israel seed. 
Let's keep going. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, Satan's seed and Israel's seed. Because who was going to come from the woman's seed? Christ. Look, you can read about all of this. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you a good breakdown for this verse right here. Revelation 12 explains uh, Genesis 3 and 15. Verse 16. I mean verse, uh, let me keep reading. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. Let's keep going. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So your desire of learning, your desire of anything was going to be to your husband. You was going to have to desire him for that. Period. You have to desire him for that. And I'm going to let y'all know, this right here, is one of the first commandments that was given well the first commandment of course be fruitful to multiply then another commandment okay we okay we got the sabbath then another commandment we got um what else we got oh uh, yeah don't uh don't 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 deal with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil here go another commandment this is especially for the woman i'm telling you sisters now if you sisters if, if you sisters are not allowing your husband to rule over you, if you sisters being evil, mistreating your husband, if he ain't, if you ain't allowing him to head over you and have the lordship over you, listen to me. I don't care how many uh, commandments that you apply. I don't care if you were friends of the board of blue. You come to the Sabbath every week. You are not getting the kingdom if you're not fulfilling this. And this goes right back to 1 Corinthians 14 and 34. I'm telling you right now, you're not getting the kingdom if you ain't fulfilling it. And that's the truth. All right, where we at? Verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eat the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. And sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. And the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for the dust, for dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothed them. So what he did, this was animal sacrifice to cover the sins. It's a scripture in uh, Isaiah 61 and 10 where he said, Let my saints be clothed with righteousness. And it's another precept in Revelation 5 and 6. That you saying something, it's a the lame, the, the lamb. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Just to let you know, this talking about sacrifice, because some of y'all probably still think that they was naked. Some of y'all. <sighs> Uh, you know what? Uh, I can't find a free show right now, but I think it's in Revelation 5. Let me keep going. Verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Edom cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Chapter 4, verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. 
and she get, again buried his brother Abel. And Abel was the keeper of sheep, but Cain was the tiller, was a tiller of the ground. So now you're gonna have the birth, the trade, and the religion of Cain and Abel. Verse three. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground and offered unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the first ling of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain, Cain, and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So Cain was pissed. And one of the reasons why he was pissed, remember, in chapter 3, the earth was cursed. So it was hard to get fruit out of the ground because the Lord cursed it. He told Adam, look, thorns and thistles is this thing going to bring forth to you. You know? Now let's keep going. Verse... Seven. If thou do well shall not thou be accepted. So now the Lord is calling for Cain to repent because Cain knew that the Lord required the animal sacrifice. How did he know that the Lord uh, required the animal sacrifice? Uh, Genesis 3 verse 21 is when the Lord ordained the sacrificial law. That's when they started the sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep going. And if thou do well, thou shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lies at the door. So the Lord said, look, if you repent, I'm going to accept your offer. But if you don't repent, then you're going to be in sin. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. He said, look, then you're going to become subject to Satan. And Satan is going to rule over you. Verse 8, And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. What they was talking about. I ain't going to get the precept. But they was, Cain was, uh, Abel was trying to get Cain to repent. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass. When they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. And now art thou cursed from the earth. So now he, the Lord is about to take Cain, Melanie, because Cain looked like everybody else at the beginning of the time. You know what I'm saying? Let's read on. And he said, I mean, what we at? And now art thou cursed from the earth, which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. A fugitive and a vagabond shall thou be in the earth. And Cain said unto the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Behold, thou, thou hast driven me out this day from the face of the earth. And from thy face shall I be hid, and I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond in the earth, and it shall come to pass, that everyone that findeth me shall slay me. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slay Cain, vengeance shall take, shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. So now this proof in the pudding, like we brought out in Genesis 1, there was more people on the earth. Because he, uh, Cain was scared. He was like, look, hey, look, they're going to kill me. So the Lord told nobody. He told, look, hey, they ain't going to be able to touch Cain. Let's go, verse 15. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayed Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him should kill him. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Edom. So now you got to ask yourself, who is Nod? Who is Nod? And Cain knew his wife. And guess what? He found a wife in the land of Nod. And she conceived and burnt 
Enoch. And he built it a city. Why is he building a city? This proof in the put all these verses is proof in the pudding that it was more people on the earth during the time of Adam. You know what I'm saying? Adam, Eve, and Cain. Because he, you know, if he killed Abel, that means he's just three people. But now nah, he went to a land of Nod. And I'm still trying to figure out who Nod is because a lot of these lands was named after us at the time. I'm still trying to figure out, you know what I'm saying, where he get his wife from. Oh, I already know. <laughs> there were plenty of people on the earth during that time. I know already, so I'm good. I know why he built the city too. And called the name of this city after the name of his son, Enoch. You see that? Let's keep going. And until Enoch was born, Jared. And uh, Iran begat Mahujiel. And Mahujiel begat Methusiel. And Methusiel begat Lamech. And Lamech took unto him two wives. Now look, here you go. This your first time. The sons of the wicked is the first ones you to read about having multiple wives. It is what it is, y'all. I know we might have some people from other camps online listening to us read. But the sons of the wicked was the ones that was first to take multiple wives. You don't read about the sons of God taking multiple wives. No. When you read Genesis 5, you read, you read about the sons of God. None of them took... Uh, none of them took multiple wives. You, know, you don't read about it. All right, where we at? And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Adah, and the name of the other, Zillah. And Adah burnt Jabal. He was the father of such as dwelt in tents, and of such as have cows. Now, let me re reiterate what I was saying. I'm talking about in the beginning. In the beginning, it was none but one wife. And when you read about the sons of God in the beginning, Genesis uh, chapter 5, you'll see that they did have multiple wives. You only read about the sons of the wicked having multiple wives. All right, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Uh, verse, 20, verse 20. And Adab Bergebal, he was the father of such as dwell in tents. And of such as have cattle. And his brother's name was Jabal. He was the father of all such as handled the harp and organ. And Zillah, she also brought tuba came, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. These dudes, these dudes start making weapons. These, listen to me, these dudes start making weapons, man. You reading about weapons being created right now. It said he was the instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. And the sister of Tubacain was Naomi. And Lamech said unto his wives, Ara and Zillah, Hear ye voice, ye wives of Lamech, hearken unto my speech. For I have slain a man to my wounded, and a young man to my hurt. So this dude was a murderer. These folks is murderers. Listen to me. Cain and his seed. This is how you know Satan working with him. These dudes are straight murderers. And look, this is how you know. Look, he knew what he was doing. Look, listen to what he's about to say in the next verse. Verse 24. <coughs> if Cain shall be again be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. So he already knew thou should not kill. This let you know too. They knew the commandments during that time. He knew that. That's why you said, look, hey, my daddy been to uh, be re, uh, revenge seven, sevenfold. Hell, I'm going to be, be uh, revenge seventy and seventyfold. What we at? Seventy and sevenfold. Verse 25. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son, and called his name Seth. For God said, she have appointed me another seed in the stead of Abel, who was slain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son. And he began his name, I mean, he and he called his name Enoch. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. So this let you know, okay, through Seth, people started to worship God. They started to keep the commandments. 
of uh, you know what I'm saying through Cain, men started to do evil and wickedness. You know what I'm saying? That's why the Lord chose self. And I okay, that's the reading of Genesis 1 through 5. I can make it to camp today. All praise to the most high. Uh, any questions? That was the uh, reading of Genesis 1 through 4. Now my voice kind of gone. I'm dried out from teaching this weekend, but all week, you know, I had been teaching, so I've been stripping my voice every day. I gotta get back into beast mode out here. Yeah, hey, I'm telling you, Zephaniah, that's a good point. Why would they be making weapons if it's just them? Well, I don't know what Naomi mean. Let's look it up. Let's see what it means. Let's see what it means. Just because, you know, she, you know, they was a multiple wife, that don't mean that, you know, they could have been bad people. You know what I'm saying? Let me look at it. I want to see what it means, though. Hold on, y'all. Let me see. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Hey, let me pull it up. All right, here we go. Let's see what it means. It means pleasantness. Pleasantness. So if you're a pleasant sister, oh, crazy. Loveliness. That's what it means. Loveliness. If you're a lovely sister, it'll be a good name. Okay, let me look. Captain. You gave us better understanding. I have read it, but the way you explain it makes it better. Hey, I'll pray to the most. I ain't even break it, break it down, too. Like, hey, I got mad precepts. So all praises. Precept in Isaiah for cattle. Well, no, nah, that wasn't a precept for cattle. That was for uh, showing you that this talking about the nations. Um, I think I told you. What I say for uh, cattle? Let me see something. Can I have one for cattle? The nations. Oh, Isaiah 49 and 23. It's talking about the nation. Because he said you have to lick up the dust. Okay, go there real quick. Isaiah 49 and 23. Isaiah 49 and 23. Let's get there real quick. Okay. All right, it say, And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. Thou shalt bow down to thee with their face toward the earth and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. I'm going to give you another one. I'm going to give you a better one. Because it said lick up the dust. Because remember it said you're going to be at the Lord's state. That actually, this what all of us, like we supposed to rule over them. They're supposed to be licking up the dust of our feet, but we broke the commandments of God. So they're supposed to stay at a lower state. But since we brought the commandments, the Lord said, look, hey, you they, you going to become the tail, and they're going to become the head. you going to come down very low, and they're going to be above you. So now I'm going to give you another. I'm going to give you a real good one. This is the one I like. Go to Micah 7, verse 16. Then you know that that cattle is actually just talking about the nation. Micah 7. Okay, hold on, hold on. Verse 16. I 
right, here we go. Micah chapter 7, verse 16. The nations shall see and be confounded in all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. You see that right there? I forgot who asked that question. You see that the nations shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear before be, uh, and shall fear because of me. Just let you know that they're gonna be at a lower state. All right, let me keep going. Let me do see what other questions we got. So I pray and hope. Let me see who asked that question. I think it was Noah. I hope uh that answer your question right there Noah. dealing with the cow the cow are just talking about the nations that's it all right where we at okay in genesis 3 and 15 is that why when somebody does something to Edomites today, they receive more punishment? If somebody do something to Esau, they receive more punishment. Uh, no. I don't, I don't understand. Hey, uh, rephrase your question for me, sis. Is that why when somebody does something to Edomites today, they receive more punishment? I don't know what you're talking about. Genesis 3.15 let you know it says it's going to be images. Between her seed and their seed, let you know that they always going to hate us. It ain't no way possible that you're going to be able to get these folks to love you. No matter what you do, your protest and your march, no matter how much you have sex with them, no matter what you do. These folks will always hate you. Did God give man meat to eat? Yeah, but that's in chapter 8, I think, or 9. So we ain't dealing with that right now. What did Cain and Abel talk about? Mm. Let me see. So let's go to Matthew 23 real quick. I don't think it necessarily say. I'm going to tell you why we know that Cain was trying to get him to repent. Let's go to Matthew 23. That's why I said Cain was trying, when they was talking, we know Cain was trying to get them to, get him to repent. Matthew 23, verse, uh, yeah, let me start at verse 31. What should I start at? Thir Let's start at third 29. Listen to this. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets, and gun is the sulpicus of the righteous. So now, the subject right here, what we're dealing with, the subject matter is dealing with the prophets. Now, listen, who asked that question? Uh, Shemiel. Listen, Shemiel. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fear ye up the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. So Abel was a prophet. Abel was a prophet. All right, where we at? As he said, all the prophet's blood, you know what I'm saying, going to come upon you. From the blood of righteous Abel. All right. Yeah, they, they having a shootout right now. These folks been wild in the Memphis sh shooting out in broad daylight all, every day. All right, what we doing? Uh, let me see. Okay. So I hope I hope that you uh, answer your question. 
What are the Sharibus, chapter 3 and 24? Let me look and make sure. Let me see if I got the precept in this Bible. I forgot what the Sharibus the is. The Sharibus, I think it's dealing with the angels. I don't know. I, I can't tell you that right now. I can't answer them right now. I forgot. I don't even got it wrote down in this book. Yeah, I'm thinking it's talking about angels. That's what I'm thinking it's talking about. The angels. Okay, let me see. Uh... How large was the garden of Edom, according to the scriptures? Hey, it was big as hell, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let me see. It, it described it. Let me look at it. Uh, man, it was big. I need a map. I don't got no map. It described it. Like what we be seeing over there, you know, we, even when you look at the map dealing with Israel, like we don't even believe, you know, I'm me, I believe Israel way bigger than that, man. Remember who created the map. These are the same folk that told you they make it seem like Africa is, is, is small when it's the biggest country or the biggest continent on the planet Earth. They try to make it seem like Europe or uh, uh, bigger than uh, bigger than uh, Africa. They try to make it seem like the U.S. is bigger than Africa. You know what I'm saying? So these are the same people that we draw the map. When you got like so many countries that can fit in Africa alone, you know. They say was Jubal, I guess you're trying to say the creator of music. Uh, let me see, let me see. Let me look at this. I really. Mm, Let me see. He was the father of all such as handled on harp and organ. I don't know. Hey, look. I want to say he was. Can't tell you for sure. Because it's certain questions. I ain't never asked that question. I should have asked that. I know that one of his sons was created of weapons, though. You know what I'm saying? So, probably so. All praise for sure. show you. Okay, all praise to the most high. If you want to get all the pre-sales, man, you just got to look for some of my old classes. They might be titles, Genesis. I don't know what, you know, I ain't gonna, I'm going to tell y'all the truth, man. I don't know what they is titled, but they, they up there, though. You know, they up there. Captain, can you give us a pre-sale for Genesis 4 and 8? I already gave y'all the uh, pre-sale for that. Matthew 23 and 35. I really gave you that. Okay. What was the light in Genesis 1, 3 through 5? Go to 2nd Edge 6. Second Edge 6. And um the I mean verse 38 and I said oh Lord thou spakest from the beginning of creation even the first day and said it's thus let heaven and earth be made and thy word was a perfect work and then was the spirit and darkness and silence was on every side and the sounds of man's voice was not yet formed then commandest thou a fur light to come forth of thy treasures that thy work might appear so he just said it's a fair light i can't tell you what exactly what it was that will create it was just the most high creating light to show his uh to show his work that's their fair light you see every morning y'all know how it be early in the morning and then it start to be light outside it is not the light coming from the sun though so y'all know it's i'm tell y'all i'm let me say this Y'all do is know it's light in the sky when the sun ain't out, right? 
It is light in the sky when the sun is not out. And the Lord made their light appear. Their light is 12 hours of light and it's 12 hours of darkness. Then he created the sun and moon. The sun is the greater light and that rules over the day. So remember, okay, you got the, a fair light that God created. I don't know. Hey, what? Hey, look, I don't, we don't know everything, y'all. Remember, it says some things <coughs> he gonna hide and some things he gonna declare. You know what I'm saying? So some things gonna be hid from us. Some things gonna be declared. All I can tell you is that it's light in the sky without the sun shining. You know what I'm saying? The sun is the greater light that rules over the day. You know what I'm saying? And the moon is the lesser light that rules over the night. And those was created different days. All right, where we at? So I hope that help you out, sis. Captain, she meant Genesis 4, verse 24. What about 4, verse 24? I don't know what y'all talking about. Genesis 4 and 24. Let me look at it. A precept. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly lament seventy and sevenfold. What y'all, I don't know what y'all talking about. I don't know. Hey, explain it to me again. In Genesis 3 and 15, talks about when Jacob and Esau, Esau bruised our head and we will bruise his heel. No, it's talking about uh, he will bruise our heel and we will bruise his head. The precept to that, bruising our heel is making us stumble. That's what it's talking about. It's talking about making us stumble. Like, like, okay, now let's give a real analogy of dealing with a serpent now. If a serpent wants to strike your heel, what you gonna do? You gonna stump. So that's what he's talking about. He uh in between that seed. Oh, it shall bruise. It shall bruise thy head, saying, because remember he's talking to the serpent right here. So he's saying, look, the woman seed is gonna bruise your head, and thou shall bruise its heel. Meaning you're going to cause them to stumble. How do they make us stumble? Uh, the evil communication, you know what I'm saying? Corrupting the good manner. All the different things that Esau doing to make us stumble. Or Satan doing to make us stumble in this kingdom. And I'm going to give you a precept for bruised the head. Go to Romans 16 and 20. So you can know exactly what it's talking about. Romans 16, verse 20. I just say, in the God of peace, you'll bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Meaning we was going, Christ was going to come and destroy the works of Satan. And it's a precept for that too. All right, where we at? So I hope you understand that. Captain, can you give the explanation of the first sacrifice in Genesis 3 and 21? I couldn't find the precept. Foundation of, a lot of people don't understand when I bring this out, let me see some. I'm telling y'all, like these ain't no easy. This stuff ain't easy. What we're going over right now, I'm telling you right now. Hell, I didn't went over it plenty of times. I still be getting caught up. Oh, okay, well, I don't know well, why I got Revelations five. Okay, it's Revelations thirteen and eight. Hold on, let me look at it. Let me make sure. Let me look at All right, look, if y'all get it, uh, look, I'm going to pull a bishop on. If you get it, you get it. You don't, you don't. <laughs> for real. Just ask the Lord for understanding. Revelation 13, verse 8. Hello. 
on, let me make sure. I might got a better one. I might got an easier one. Hold on, let me see. Something. Phone about to go dead. All right, y'all, let me see if we can make this one work. All right, here we go. Um, okay, somebody text me one. Now, I had a good one in Revelation. Let me see. I don't know. Who, I think that's Captain Matter Thighs. Let me make sure. It is Captain Matter Thighs. He just texted me. Let me see what he got. Revelation 16 and 27. Because I got one that I be using, but a lot of them say it's hard. All right, Revelation 16 and 27. And the bullock for the sin offering, and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place, shall one carry forth without the camp. And thou shall burn in the fire their skins and their flesh and their dung. I like that right there. I like that one. Skins and coats. So he said you're supposed to burn that in the fire. The skins and their flesh and their dung. So that's a real good one. Hey, I appreciate it, Captain Matthew. That was on point right there. Okay, that's even better. Now I'm going to read Revelation 13 and 8. So now you got that one. So this should be a little easier for you now. To show you what it was that was slain. This Revelation 13 and 8. It say, And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose name was not written in the book of life of, of the of life, in the book of the of in the book of life of the Lamb. Slain, listen, Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So in the beginning of the world, they're saying a lamb was slain. Now, this scripture right here is twofold. Now, it, it, it's, it's talking about a literal lamb in Genesis 3 and 21. But uh, in um, Revelation 13 and 8, it ain't talking to, it's talking about Christ. Because Christ left, represents that lamb that was slain for our sins. So a lamb, a lamb was slain, slain from the foundation of the world, from the beginning of the world. Cap, if the angels blocking the way of understanding. Yeah, I knew I knew it was there. I just didn't have a precept. They want the precept for it. That's why I said the sheriff. Uh, sheriff. Well, thank you, Captain Zakar. All praises, bro. Hey, appreciate it too, Noah. You said, oh, you listen to them blog talks? <laughs> That's a long time. What is the fig leaves in April? Okay. I, I told you what it was. That's them trying to cover their sins. You know what I'm saying? That's it. They'll get Job 31 and 33. Job 31 and 33. They don't rep, they just represent them trying to cover their sins. Job 31, verse 33. I got another one in Lamentations 1 that's pretty good too. But I think I like this one better. Okay, Job 31 and 33. If I covered my transgressions as Adam by hiding my iniquity in my bosoms. So that's all this represents. Remember, this is an illustrated story. So them fig leaves and aprons represents him trying to cover his transgressions. I'm going to give you this other one too. Number one and eight. Revelation 16 and 28. Oh, praise. I'm glad the cap is on. All right, uh, what we at? Lamentations 1 and 8. Jerusalem have grievously sinned. Therefore, she is removed. All that honored her despise her because they have seen her nakedness. Seen her what? Sin. And Adam tried to do what? Cover his sins. That's what the fig leaves and the aprons represent. So nakedness represents sin, and the fig leaves and the aprons represents him trying to cover his sins. Okay, well, we begin the four chapters a day, every day from you, Captain. No, y'all ain't. No. <laughs> I mean, no, look. 
Hey man, if if I was permitted to do so, I'd read them every day. But look, we got man, look, hundreds of good teachers in Israel. You know what I'm saying? Hundreds of good teachers in the Israel. All right, uh, what we at? Jake think? Okay, let me go down. Cap was what? What was the land? No, it just was a land. I just was, you know, I like to expound on certain stuff and make people think, cause a lot of people keep thinking that, okay, it was only. Adam, Eve, and Cain, but then he went to a land, the land of Nod, and then he, so I always be like, well, who, you know, Nod, because I know the lands was named after people, like, when he had his son, he named the city Enoch that he built it, so that's why I'd be like, well, who was Nod, you know, now, who was the wife he got, it's um, uh, Genesis 3 and 21, a precept in Psalms 132, verse 16, what's the other one, Genesis 3 and 21? So it seems like you already got a precept. Uh, let me see. Oh, we already went over there. We already went over there. Okay. The angels. Okay. Does Genesis 4 and 20 prove that Jubal and his people were eating meat before God ordained it? I don't know. It ain't no precept that say that. Ain't no precept that say that. Yeah, yeah. How was I say he is? Uh, is is like? Was it him? I don't got no precept that saying that he was the light, but it is a precept that say that the the light gonna come from the Most High. That's how you know who the light come from. Uh, Isaiah sixty something. Let's we'll say the light gonna come from he and he gonna be the light of the city. Let's get that real quick. I just don't got no precept showing that that light right there in Genesis one. One through uh, five was the most high. You know what I'm saying? That's why, like, the way we teach, uh, when we teach, if we basically, if you hear one somebody saying something, we got a precept to back it up. We might not want to go over all, the, you know, the precepts, but trust me, we got a precept to back it up. We ain't just going to be saying stuff. Let me see. The one that said the Lord is the light of it. Let me see if I can find it. I think it's in Isaiah 60 something. All right, Revelation 21, verse 23. And the city have no need of the sun, need of the moon to shine in it, for the Lord, uh, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. So that right there, that's for in the kingdom. Now you look, hey, y'all could be correct. I just don't got no uh, precept to bag it up in Genesis 1. Ten toes down is a wall. Oh, <laughs> for real, like you uh, talk about that now, it makes sense. The light does be out before the sun. Yeah, that's true. There a par uh, there's a parallel, Psalms 49 and 11 in Genesis 4 and 17. You said there's a parallel. Okay, I don't know if you're asking a question or not. Uh, yes, I understand. Thanks. Okay, all praises. Does Genesis 4 and 15 mean we... When we do something to the Edomites, we receive a harsh punishment. No, it don't mean that right there. No, it don't mean that. Uh, what we at? That's why the Tea Party uses that don't tread on me, Monica, okay? What's the precept? Romans 16, I think it's verse 20 I brought out. Okay. Okay, can Psalms 49 11 and Genesis 4 17 be used as a precept? Let me see what you got. Okay, you still dealing with them weapons being made? 49 and 11. Y'all got a lot of questions today. Every time we go over Genesis, a million questions. Well, I mean, I wouldn't use that one for a say. Hold on, let me look. Hold on, let me look. Go back. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Cause you, oh yeah, yeah, that's a good precept right there. Yeah, that's on point. 
Okay, yeah, more because that's perfect precept. All right, uh, let me see. Yeah, that 16 to 27 was on point. Hey, keep standing in the spirit, Linton. Hey, look, I don't know. Look, I, all I know that is water above the earth. So if you put them in, uh, I don't know. <laughs> hey, I don't know, sis. She said, when God say he put the lights of the firmament in the heaven, does that mean the lights are under the water above the earth? Hey, look, I'm thinking so. Hell, I don't know. Yep, in the water. I think it's in the water above the earth that's what i think but i don't know that's you know some of that stuff too deep for me i ain't scared to say i don't know i thought i blocked bobby and someone tell me how to do that properly what was the other scripture in revelation that precepts with revelation 13 and 8 uh, I don't know. I ain't have another one. I had the wrong precept. That's why I told y'all at first. When I looked at it, I'm like, it wasn't right. Then I had to Google it. Just let you know it was a lamb. You know what I'm saying? And in, in, in Revelation 16 and 27, it was a lamb that was sacrificed. That's it. The reason the reason why you know it was a lamb, because he said from the foundation of the earth. From the beginning of the earth, a lamb was slain. Period. That lamb represents Christ. Slain for what? Our sins. Slain for what? Adam's sins. Okay, what we at? Now I say Leviticus 16 and 27. Yeah, we already went over that. Leviticus 16 and 27. I kept saying Revelations. Hey, I do that sometimes. All right, Manessa here, just a little info about the Israelites. Uh, okay, now nah, we we want to, uh, hey, y'all got to ask questions pertaining to class. Y'all got to ask the questions pertaining to class, bro. Hey, send an email every, or, or hit us up, hit, hit one of the captains up privately. Because we like to stay on topic when we teach class. So I don't want you to think I'm throwing y'all. There's water in space. Space is water. All right, y'all. With that, I'm going to say shalom. That's it. I think that, yep. Hey, I know they said two hours, but look, y'all don't got no more questions. That is what it is. I pray y'all enjoyed the reading of Genesis 1 through 4. I tried to answer as many questions as I can. Hey, Eric, hey, hit, you know, you can either message me privately, message one of the captains privately. We'll answer your question for sure. So, um, hey, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do. I think uh, well, I will give a suggestion uh, to the leadership, you know, dealing with these classes that we're doing with the reading. We're going to read four chapters a day, every day. So it's going to be different readers reading. I think what we should do first is read it all the way through. And then afterwards, we can sit up there and uh, answer questions. And therefore... We can use the audio, you know what I'm saying? We can use the audio. So if somebody want to download the audio and hear, you know, they hear us reading it, then that will be great. So that way, instead of doing it like I did it today, I just thought about that. I should have just read it straight through. And then afterward, this is how you know that somebody paying attention because they have questions, period. So that's what I'm going to do next time I read. I'm going to read it straight through. And then afterwards, let you answer questions. I ain't going to give no precepts or nothing. So that way, if we want to use the audio, we can use the audio. All right, y'all. Hey, with that, I'm going to say shalom, Messiah, Christ bless. I want to give double honors to the bishop, Elder Nathaniel. I want to give uh, honors to the deacons, the captains, the officers, the soldiers, all y'all brothers and sisters that's pushing this truth. Hey, look, y'all, don't give up, man. Hey, I know it's been hard out there. We ain't been congregating. Don't give up. Satan been on some of us. Like, hey, whoo. I know Satan been on me, for real. 
Y'all keep pushing, man. All right, y'all. Shalom.